Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klopper and I am uh, in the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent. In this video clip I would like to show you how we can find uh, typical enzyme parameters like Vmax and Km from um, a graph and in this case from an Eddie Hofstey plot. Now, first of all, we discussed uh, previously that a usual michaelis menten uh, plot, where we basically plot the rate of a reaction, V versus uh, S, is not a very good plot, because it gives us a curve like that. And it's always difficult to deal with curves. Uh, we can never be sure about Vmax because it could go on like that or it could go on like that. And it is very difficult from a michaelis menten plot to determine Vmax and uh, correspondingly uh, Vmax over Km or Km. So what can we actually do? Well, ideally we would like to transform uh, our curve here into a straight line because it is very easy to in, in extrapolate uh, a straight line. So how do we do that? First of all let's write down our michaelis menten equation. So we have got V equals Vmax times the substrate concentration divided by Km plus the substrate concentration like this. And the first thing that we do is we divide both sides by the substrate concentration. So what we see here is that this substrate concentration here cancels out and we get V divided by the substrate concentration equals Vmax and this substrate concentration here uh, cancels out with this division here divided by Km plus the substrate concentration. And the next step what we can do is we bring this expression here in the denominator to the other side. So we actually multiply by Km plus the substrate concentration and we get V over S times Km plus the substrate concentration equals and Km plus S here in the denominator cancels out with this part here equals Vmax. The next thing is that we just simply multiply this part into the brackets and we get V over S times Km plus V over S times S gives us Vmax. And we see that we can cancel out the substrate concentration here like that. And we basically get, uh, write this on uh, the next page, we have V over S times Km plus V equals Vmax. What we can do now is we subtract from both sides V over S times Km. So what we have got on the left hand side is just V and on the right hand side we have Vmax minus V over S times Km. And I can write this in a slightly different form. I can write this as V equals minus Km times V over the substrate concentration, so that's part, this part here, plus Vmax. And that actually is our linear transformation of the Michaelis-Menten equation. Um, 
why is it linear? Well, we can write this as y equals mx plus c. So our m here, our gradient, would be minus km. Our x would be v over s. And our v max would be the intercept with the y-axis. So, how do we plot this thing, this graph? So, what we do actually is we plot our data. On the y-axis we plot v. And on the x-axis we plot our x here. And this would be v over s. Like that. And I would like to have another uh, color. So what we then get is we calculate our data and we would get a straight line like that. Now try to make that a, a reasonably straight line. Something like that. So that should be our straight line from our data. Now how do we find our uh, enzyme parameters like uh, Vmax and like Vmax over Km and uh, Km itself. All we need to do is we need to extend our line here to this point here and this point here gives us Vmax. We can extend it also in that direction and this point here gives us Vmax over Km. And remember Vmax is actually a parameter that tells us how the enzyme behaves at very high substrate concentrations. Vmax over Km is a parameter that tells us how the enzyme behaves at very low substrate concentration. And the gradient, and I use a different color for that, So the gradient of this here, this gradient gives us minus Km. And note Km is always positive, but because the line goes down here, we've got a negative sign here. And Km tells us something about uh, the affinity of the enzyme. If the Km is high, um, we uh, need a lot of substrate and therefore the affinity of the enzyme to the substrate is low. If the Km is low, the affinity is high. So it goes exactly uh, in opposite ways. Now this plot here is commonly known as the Edi Hofstey plot. It actually is very easy to uh, perform an Edi Hofstey plot uh, because all you need to do is calculate this V over S. So it's only one calculation step, uh, your initial rate divided by the substrate concentration, and I probably should write it like that. Um, and it gives you a nice straight line. Also an advantage of the Edi Hofstey plot is that usually the data are not really clustered together. So we might have it like that, uh, something like that. And that is something that you don't find with the other plots. So for example, in a line with a Berg plot, um, where you basically plot 1 over V versus 1 over S, so that's the line with a Berg plot, you usually have a data crowding in this region and then it gets something like that. So you've got this data crowding here and that uh, in an experimental uh, approach is never a good thing to have all the data bunched together on one side. Also for a line with a Berg plot you have to very carefully uh, design your uh, plot area because you go into this negative quadrant here so this part here, and this one here gives you, for example, minus 1 over Km. 
Uh, and uh, it is sometimes very tricky to uh, read accurate uh, values from a line with a Burke plot. Something uh, that you definitely don't have uh, with an A.D. Hofstede plot. In my opinion, the A.D. Hofstede plot is a very, very good plot. It sometimes makes good data uh, look a little bit worse, but uh, hey, you can't win every day. So A.D. Hofstede plot, you plot V versus V over S and you get a straight line. You can also plot it uh, in, in, a, in a different way. You plot it Vs over V. Uh, let's quickly do that. And this is also possible in this kind of plot. So if you plot V over S on the y-axis and V on the x-axis, you still get a straight line. And again, this is a straight line, should be a straight line. But in this case, you have to be careful because this point here gives you Vmax over Km. And the easiest way to find out what is uh, what is that you have got here V over S, so a rate over a concentration if you look at the units and Vmax over Km has also this unit. It's a rate over a concentration. So you always know that Vmax over Km is found on the V over S uh, axis. Likewise, if you extend this line here, you get this point here and this must be Vmax. So again, that's quite easy because you know that the unit for a rate uh, for V is a rate, and Vmax is also a rate, so uh, you know that you find Vmax on the V-axis. The only thing that really changes is the, the gradient here, and in this case, if you plot it V over S versus V, you have a gradient of minus, because it's going down, like that, and this time it is 1 over Km. So, Although technically uh, it is perfectly acceptable to plot an A.D. Hofstede plot uh, in this way, I actually prefer an A.D. Hofstede plot in this way, so where you have the rate on the y-axis, and again you find Vmax because it is related to uh, the rate, to V, and Vmax over Km as the intersect uh, of your straight line with the V over uh, S-axis because again we've got the same units. So I hope uh, this was useful for you and I strongly recommend that whenever possible you use an Eddie Hofstede plot, never use a line with a Burke plot and I'm not a terribly great fan of a line with a Burke plot. So thank you very much for watching that.